let's get ready to party. I didn't really, maybe you're in the wrong, maybe I'm in the wrong place. No, you are right in the right place and I'm in the right place and I'm Tim Laskus and yeah, this is the Tim Laskus show and this is a lucky episode 013. I hope none of you out there are superstitious. I almost said, I hope none of you are suspicious. Hey, you might be suspicious. You can be superstitious and suspicious, I guess. Hey, but today's guest is Kristen Swarczyk. This is an awesome interview, and she's got a lot going on. You're going to learn a ton from her. She's an internationally recognized empowerment speaker. She's a transformation catalyst. She's an author, a radio host. I think she does it on intentional living. I don't know if the name of it is. It's She's a radio host, let me tell you. Anyway, she's been featured on ABC, CNN, CNBC, USA Today, MTV, <gasps> and the Wall Street Journal. My goodness, she has been around. She's been everywhere on television and radio, and now on this little rinky-dink podcast of mine. Psh, man, I have to send her that check. <laughs> hey, she does a great job of talking about self-awareness is key to self-mastery. So you're going to learn a lot. So sit back and enjoy. The Tim Lasker Show, in search of entrepreneurial gold. Tim digs deep into the minds of his guests. Entertaining, down to earth, and informative. Now, here's your host, Tim Laskus. Welcome everyone to the Tim Laskus Show. I am super excited to have Kristen Swarczyk as my guest today. Kristen, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Tim. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited that I actually said your name correctly. <laughs> you did perfectly. <laughs> hey, I usually like uh, the, the guests to g tell a little bit about themselves aside from business. And you were saying that you run about um, 400 miles a day. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. No. <laughs> No, I'm getting better each year, though. I um, actually never was a distance runner, but my mom passed away in 2013. So I did the Broad Street run that year. And it was, you know, training for 10 miles. And it just, um, you know, the training itself was such a, a great experience. But now it's a passion. It's actually my meditation to just get out there and run every day. So I do really enjoy running. Yeah, it. For me, I, I enjoy running too and, and just working out. And I think mentally and physically, I, I get that benefit. M now, yeah. mentally, before I run or work out, I'm struggling. I'm like, oh, God, I got to get through this. But 100% yes. every, every time when I'm done, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I did it. Yeah, you always do feel better. And you're right. It's both. It's the physical and mental mm -hmm. you know, state that's really helpful. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself professionally sure. and what are you currently working on? Sure. Yeah, I am an executive coach. I focus on helping leaders within the corporate and entrepreneurial world to really command a presence, to be the authority that they truly are. So a lot of what I do is help people tap into their uniqueness as an individual to get back to remembering who they are and you know letting go of all of the self-limiting beliefs and fears that keep them from standing in that truth so they can really command a presence and move forward with their dreams you know a lot of times we allow basic needs that like take us to um, you know a fear-based way of living to limit us and so it's really empowering work. It's deep. You know, a lot of times I work with people over the course of three months because it's a, a deep connection and um, transformation, actually, that, that occurs through the work that I do. So that's, that's my real passion professionally. Uh, yeah. Now, what are some of those negative internal kind of beliefs or dialogue that you hear that is, is kind of similar? Maybe there's a trend in, in working with clients? There absolutely is. You know, one of the biggest ones is we feel unworthy. You know, we crave love and acceptance, and that can show up in so many different ways in our life. And, you know, it starts literally from our first cries as babies where, you know, we want our caretakers to pick us up. So when we're born in the womb, we are not feeling any of that. Everything we desire is being provided for. So 
You know, from the, the early stages of our development, we are already being conditioned to mold and shape who we are to get the attention of others. So a lot of us can recognize throughout any given day how we may feel less than worthy. And I think that's the bigger, the biggest one that holds us back, you know, and, and doesn't allow us to go for exactly what we want, realizing that we deserve that fully and nothing should in fact hold us back. For sure. And, you know, working as a psychologist and working in the, in the prison system and, you know, mm-hmm. reading a lot of the files, it's almost like the names change, but the information as far as their background and history mm-hmm. stayed the same. Absolutely. Long history of abuse and neglect and just, you, you know, I mean, you wouldn't believe all the, the things they've gone to gone through. Mm-hmm. And, and so it really forged and kind of of laid that path for them where they were in prison and it made sense how they got there not to say that everyone who's been you know struggled and had issues early on that's not what i'm saying but certainly people who have never gotten any any help and you know any kind of treatment along the way and just had a severe environment of of you know abuse and neglect that went on and on and on and it really formed who they were and it made sense and so yeah when you talked about those early childhood experiences really creating who we are as adults, it really carries through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're the grooves that just develop in our brain. And, you know, that's that's our natural state over time of conditioning. Mm -hmm. And how how difficult has it been for you to to work with clients and have them overcome some of those negative internal beliefs? Well, I think everyone's at a different stage of awareness. And, And truly what it is is, self-awareness that's the real key to self-mastery so the more a person is willing to see themselves almost as a casual observer would and not hold on to the judgment and start forgiving and understanding that everything's happened in their life for a reason you know some of the worst things that we go through in our life are actually gifts And when people can open up their mind to see that, that's where true transformation can take place rather rapidly. So it's, it's really a matter of who's, who's ready to step up, open minded, you know, hoping for that real transformation. Well, that, that's pretty powerful. And you talked about seeing those, those experiences as gifts and, Mm -hmm. and something to learn from. And many people may initially have that viewpoint that, you know, oh, this happened to me, therefore I can never, you know, get over it and never become anything. But you kind of really switched that mindset. To, no, this happened to you. And it was an incredible experience that helped you grow and learn and Absolutely. take it as, as fuel to empower them and not as something that will burn them down. Absolutely. I mean, what, what, what happens? We're always guided, you know, and the more awareness we have about the universe or a higher power guiding us on our path, the more we're able to see that because once you start tapping into it, you see the signs every day in your life. And, you know, it's those whispers that we hear, that little stirring in our belly, that intuition that tells us when we're veering off our path. But sometimes it requires literally being hit over the head for you to actually hear that call. And, you know, that could be a rock bottom moment or a big event in your life or even the loss of a loved one. Something that really wakes you up to a cycle of things that have been occurring in your life. And, you know, it's those moments that are true gifts where you can, you know, almost come down to your knees and you're in that praying position and rise above, you know, get that faith again, tap back in, connect to yourself, all of these things, you know, to realize that, you know, you were given that event because you were strong enough to get through it. And you have a choice. And when we start recognizing that we always have a choice, no matter what the conditions we're living with are, then that's where true power comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you were talking, it made me think of something Wayne Dyer had said one time about, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Absolutely. I love that statement. Yeah, I I do too. I just, I'm like, wow, that is just so powerful. Well, moving on to... 
since your, your experience in working with clients and being an entrepreneur yourself, what tips would you provide our listeners who are thinking about actually making that leap to be an entrepreneur? I've been an entrepreneur since about 2000, so it's almost 17 years now. And, you know, when I decided to do this, there was a strong stirring within me that just said, you know, this is what feels right. So the number one tip that I have for people is to really get in touch with your heart space or your intuition. If you're feeling a real strong pull to do something like that and become an entrepreneur, begin trusting it because you don't have those feelings without a real desire, you know, or, or, you know, fulfillment in your path. So, you know, we often discredit the intuition or the heart space and our mind takes over and our logical thinking mind can actually be our worst enemy. You know, it wants to keep us safe. It wants to, to keep us, um, you know, in a place where we prevent uh, fear or risks or, or different, you know, struggles within our life. And it's not always serving us best. So number one would be, you know, tap into the heart space. Number two would be start believing in yourself, realizing that if this is something that's aligned with a gift that you have, The great thing about entrepreneurship is you're tapping into your true gifts most likely. It's something that if you look back to a time when you were young, you were seeing evidence of this already starting. And you know, when you're motivated by something like that, work is not work. And you can literally, I devote so much of my life to my work because it doesn't feel like work. And when you show up every day with that energy behind what you do, you become unstoppable. I mean, there's really no limit to what you can achieve in your life. So begin believing in yourself that, you know, this is here for a reason. It's something that is is your calling most likely. So they're the two first things that I would suggest to listeners out there. Well, those are great. And the, you mentioned that kind of intuition that we all have about something. And many times we, we gravitate to whatever it might be. And we just have that feeling in our gut. And we're like, man, I enjoy that. I don't know why. I can't mm-hmm. put it into words. But it's we've all had that gut feeling about something. And I think that's very, very powerful. And, and you know, it's an important telltale sign that, hey, that's something that you're interested in. You don't really have to necessarily know why. But it seems like working with with you, Kristen, that, you know, you would help clarify some of those, uh, you know, those feelings and helping them to understand that more logically, I'm I'm sure. And then the second, you know, believing in yourself, uh, John Lee Dumas often talks about the imposter syndrome and, you know, how we think, you know, who am I to be working in a business or owning a business or hiring people or, or managing you know accounts or what providing services to people who am i what do i know and that's a that's a big issue for a lot of people wouldn't you say absolutely that is directly tied right there the imposter syndrome to our feelings of worthiness you know and we're afraid of our greatness you know when we start shining our light we feel that we need to stop you know, it's unusual how that happens, but we don't want to outshine anybody else. You know, we, we get to a certain level where we're, we think, okay, that's enough, you know, and it's often when we get to the edge that that's about where great things are about to start happening, but we're too afraid to step out. I often use the analogy of stepping out onto a bridge that's not appearing until you take that step and just fully trusting that the bridge will appear because entrepreneurship's very much like that. You know, you have to trust, you have to believe. And that's why it's so important that we do the inner work. That's why my program's typically three months because month one is really just clearing the debris, all of those things that don't serve us. It's almost like house cleaning and really building up and trusting again in that person that's always been there within you but you've just lost track of you know who you really are and you don't even really know what your values are oftentimes 
And so it's like resetting the compass so that you can walk back out there and start living your dreams. Mm. You mentioned taking that step. When did you realize that you had what it takes to be an entrepreneur and what, what helped you to take that step? Yeah, it's a great question. I, at the time, it was pretty early on. I mean, I, I graduated from college in 96. So in 2000, I was already taking a step to be an entrepreneur. And I had been working for Siemens at the time, and I developed a mentorship program that became so successful, it went corporate wide. And I realized, wow, this is truly what I love to do. And it's when I went back and got my master's degree and just, you know, got back into learning. And and this time learning was completely different because it was all hands on. And I was able to really see the results of the, the learning in the classroom. And so I just kind of kept going down that path of self-development and I couldn't get enough of it. You know, I still am evolving. We never master any of this. We just keep finding new opportunities to shine. And so that's what's so great about entrepreneurship, <clears throat> excuse me, is understanding that, you know, there is really no limit and you can always be creating new avenues of success. And that, that was something I knew early on that I would get bored in a typical job. I needed something, um, which is why consulting was so appealing to me early on because all those projects were always different and they challenged me a lot to really step it up. So, so some of those signs for me were the ones that allowed me to feel comfortable enough taking the risk, like leaving a full-time job with nothing. I just left it and walked out there and just hoped and had faith that these consulting opportunities would come. And, you know, the law of attraction really does work. It's not easy. I think it's one of the hardest things to master is really trusting mm -hmm. enough that something will appear. But if you can focus on keeping your energy in the right place, the results will keep showing up. Yeah. yeah. What what was what was the response like from your family and friends when you were going to leave that job? Did they think you were nuts? Yeah, they really <laughs> did. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting, I think, especially the different generations. I'll never forget my grandmother, you know, not just leaving the job, but even when I was steady and doing really well in the job, but I worked at home and she she just could not understand how I could not work in a in an office setting like that was just you know against her thinking so you know I think it's people's mindsets again it's the open minded mindedness that they have but when you believe that strongly in your purpose in your mission you don't let those thoughts of other people impact you or persuade you to do differently so mm -hmm. I really trusted yeah, absolutely. And, and and I think there's a lot of people out there listening today who 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 probably are worried about that. You know, what what are people gonna think of me by by taking that risk? You know, not only it's it's difficult enough, I don't know if I believe in myself, but then if I have people around me who also question me, then that really puts me at at, at kind of odds with making that decision. Absolutely. And you know what? This is one of the early things that is so hard because people are so important and literally most of our life we can be people pleasers and so anyone who's listening to the show today i want you to start thinking about what you're doing throughout the day and how much of that are you doing for yourself versus doing it for somebody else and so realizing that you know realizing possibly how little you're dedicating to your own desires. And especially if you're a parent, I have three, three daughters. So I know, you know, it's often I'm focusing on them a lot, but the oxygen mask theory of like putting that oxygen mask on yourself first, really making sure you fill your tank on a daily basis and do that self care work so that you can serve others well, all of that is so important and it's not at all selfish. And then, you know, as you start to do things that you believe in, you start realizing who your real supporters are because the great thing is this life 
opens up as an adventure and you'll start embracing things that used to scare you to death. Like, oh my gosh, who's going to show up today? You know, because when you allow the people that maybe bring you down to a lower place of energy to keep ruling your life, you can never evolve and grow. But when you're not afraid to keep walking that path and allowing those people that are not supporting you to slowly just, you know, not be so aligned with you anymore, then that's when the real people that need to step in and support you are going to show up. They literally will find you. I have people finding me on the internet every day. And some of them have become my greatest supporters or some of them are even my best friends across the country. They just showed up. And so when you believe in your truth and your purpose that much, that's when the world will literally start changing on a dime. Yeah. One thing that came to mind specifically is, you know, because I had my own experience of of leaving my job and moving to Costa Rica and having that that talk with friends and family. And, and what I later came to realize that for many of them, for most of them, it was nothing, I had nothing to do with me. It was about them. Mm-hmm. It was about their own fear of doing something so bold. Absolutely. And for a lot of them, it was kind of a dream to be yeah. able to leave everything behind. And for whatever reason, they didn't do it. And mm-hmm. so for them to have to be, to witness someone else do it, yes. then they have to look at themselves and go, well, why didn't I? So, And that's difficult to do. And so it's easier to keep other people down around you instead of having to look at yourself and go, oh, they're doing it. Look how great that is. What, what will happen to me? That is such a great point you bring up, Tim. Yeah, I mean, I always call that the mirror process because you literally will be holding mirrors up to people around you. Especially in the beginning, one of the first exercises I do is aligning people with the wheel of life and then their values. And they start to see how bumpy, I call it, your ride is because your wheel of life should be pretty round and balanced. But oftentimes when we look at all the dimensions of our life, we see, oh my gosh, I'm focusing so much just in one area. And so the wheel of life and values exercises are, um, are really important exercises to align you back, you know, onto your path. So that, that just really helps my clients to start walking in this process. And then as they realize I'm not aligned with those people anymore and they start changing their habits or maybe not hanging out with people as much, you mm-hmm. know, that they'll get a lot of feedback from people and it's not easy because people don't want you to keep holding that mirror to them. They don't want to look in it. And that's okay. You know, I'm not saying that you judge anybody, but it's just fully being aware again, having the self-awareness to know it's not you, it's them. You're in a different place in your journey and it's okay. So hold the mirror up and allow the people to just, you know, not not influence your journey so much. And you're really going to have to be conscious of how you interact with people because some of those people in my life were family members, very important family members. And of course, I'm not going to cut them out of my life, but I had to be really cautious how to include them in such a way that they did not bring me down at all. And so you really just need to kind of figure that out as you move forward, but always stay aligned on your path because that's your journey and no one else's. Yeah, that that's powerful. But I'll tell you, I'm pretty quick to cut out the, the crazy uncle that I have in my family. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And sometimes you do literally have to cut out the family member, you know, so, you know, you'll that's, learn which ones yeah. are, are definitely not needed anymore. Right. Well, the, you know, and then exactly what you're talking about is why it is, is so important to have a coach like you to be able to help people see this, because a lot of times they just kind of fumble through life and they don't understand what's going on. And for right. you to, to be right there and, and to interpret and, and to help them see you know, that themselves and, and how others, you know, are, are actually interacting and thinking and behaving and, and to interpret that whole situation is, is so powerful. But, you know, getting back to an entrepreneur and, and your experience in, in having everything that you've gained over this, you know, 
long period of time. Mm-hmm. A lot of it has to do with being able to, you, you have to make a living of it. Yes. It, it's important. Yeah. I mean, you, we want to help people, but you know, you also have to pay the bills as well. Thinking back to your own childhood growing up, what mm-hmm. were some of the messages that you received about money and, and business and finances? You know, my life growing up, I I lived a life where my parents provided everything. It was sort of just given. Like, I got a car on my 16th birthday. But the thing was, we didn't have the money. My dad put himself in a lot of debt. And, you know, now, you know, I had to find him in assisted living. He has Parkinson's. So I had to do that. And I realized the state of his finances when my mom passed away. And so that was really difficult for me because my financial viewpoint, and I love my dad to death, but he had a horrible view of finances. And we learned finances from our parents. It's not like we have classes in, you know, well, maybe in college we can if we major in that, but we don't get exposed much to the financial lessons we need to learn. And so it's really important to make sure you are aligned financially with what it takes to build your most secure and profitable financial future. And so I had to completely realign what I knew to be true and, you know, it's, it's just one of the things that comes up a lot, especially for entrepreneurs is, you know, the real struggle of what do you charge for your services? Well, that is a real indicator of where you fall on the ladder of your worth as an individual. And so if you're meeting the needs all the time to the budget of your clients, they really won't see the value of you. And it's so a lot of the coaching that I do is helping people to set the fees and to really feel that this work that they're doing is representative of that fee because it's a two part process. You know, number one, if you're undercharging for your services, they're not going to see it as valuable, but you're also not going to dedicate yourself as much as you would to that client who's paying full price for what you do. So it's mm-hmm. serving everyone to really get clear on the financial, you know, thoughts that you have at any given moment through this entrepreneurial process and, and your fees, it's really going to come up for you at that point. Well, you know, Kristen, I've talked to a lot of guests about this question of, of money and finances growing up and many people just kind of give me a very similar answer is that no one gave them any kind of help along the way while they were growing up. They were just never told or, you know, they, they watched their family either make good choices or, or bad choices. And, and so I always love to, an- to ask that question. Yes, it's a really important one, you know, and we can always change that. It's just, you know, recognizing that, okay, you know, I didn't have the best I idea of what I needed to do with my finances growing up and, you know, just getting clear again, realigning with what you want to create for your future. Yeah. And that that's the important piece is at some point recognize that you're doing a crappy job with your finances mm-hmm. and, and get help with it. You know? Absolutely. There's so much help out <laughs> right. there for us, luckily yeah. with that. So yeah, yeah. There's no excuse at, at this point. Mm-mm. Well, thinking back to your journey and I'm sure there there's been a, a lots of, of days where you wanted to, to just kind of, you know, throw your hat down and just say, you know, I'm done being an entrepreneur. Can you give us an example of a stressful situation that you had to deal with and what coping skills helped you get through it? Yeah, I would say one of the most stressful parts of my entrepreneurial journey is when all of the technology came in to play such a big role on automating what we do. And, and I I would go to seminars all the time and, and they would sell us this stuff and it would sound like it was the magic solution to everything we needed. So, you know, we'd all get excited and purchase these things and then we'd build them so far and and then we wouldn't know how to carry them out. So I think for me, execution, 
I, I think a lot of people who are entrepreneurs are very visionary. I mean, that's a great strength of an entrepreneur. But as far as executing today, it's not easy because there is so many pieces. There, you know, the technology and the automation today can just go on and on and on. And if you start becoming distracted by all of that and, and feeling like, you know, this, this new podcast or, you know, Infusionsoft or whatever these different modalities are of, you know, the CRMs are the answer, you know, really be clear about, okay, what is your major goal and focus. Focus and clarity is so important because we can't do everything. And as an entrepreneur, we may feel that we can, you know, because we're that visionary, yes. but, mm -hmm. you know, we really need to stay the course with one thing, do one thing really well and then move on. And so, because it's like digging a hole, you know, if you're going to try and dig to somewhere. You got to keep digging. You can't start digging a bunch of little holes. You're not going to have, you know, the, the right way. Like say you're planting a tree or something. Mm -hmm. You need to finish it. So, you know, I think it's really important for entrepreneurs to know the importance of focus and um, recognizing that all these things are going to be there for us, you know, and not feeling so pressured to do it all because that can be really distracting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it, you've been there and, and you've, you've faced that situation. And so, you know, to be able to, to have that insight is the, no, I can't do it all, but right. to keep on going um, and, and not keep jumping ship. And I'm sure there are yes. a lot of people out there listening, uh, myself included, where you've started, you know, several projects and for whatever reason, you just never kind of followed through. You got them going. And a lot of times that seems to be the fun part, but then once it's not fun anymore, then it's time to go on to the next. Yeah. And one of the biggest needs, you know, I think it was um, Tony Robbins once did a talk on the six human needs. And I was just looking back over that. So the basic ones are, you know, uncertainty, certainty, there's feeling significant and love and connection. They're like the four basic human needs, but the, the final two are more spiritual needs and they really contribute to your feeling of fulfillment in your life. And they are growth, which is like making progress. And so think about it. If you're not making progress in your entrepreneurial pursuits, that's really going to start chipping away at your self-worth. And you're very likely over time going to really be considering throwing in that towel. So that's where if you focus and really stay aligned with what it is you are desiring to do at that one particular time and see that progress, that's going to give you so much as far as um, the fulfillment in what you do. And um, the second need that is more spiritual is your contribution. And so really getting the joy from the contribution you're making in that arena I mean, that's what really brings us fulfillment in life is really making that impact. Yeah. So I think it's helpful to think about that and not allow yourself to get distracted with those other basic needs, which are obviously going to be a part of every day for us, but allow yourself to weigh yourself into the growth and contribution needs more so as an entrepreneur and you'll feel that progress. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. And, and speaking of, of fulfillment, Looking at your entrepreneurial journey, what's been the most fulfilling moment for you? That's a great question. I think um, just really seeing my clients walk out of the coaching situation with me after three months looking like completely different people. They just, they come in looking so weighed down and stressed and living at the effect of the world in all of their situations and they leave with like the spring in their step. They, they are just completely different people because they took all their power back along that journey. And they are now, what I tell them is you're now the cause, you know, you're living life as the cause and you're creating and writing that next chapter of your life. So every time I work with a client through this transformative process and just feeling that gratitude 
of bringing light back to people. There's nothing greater for me. I mean, it's just one of the most rewarding experiences I could be a part of. Yeah, but the value of helping to improve someone's life. I don't think yeah. that there's no other feeling in the world. Money can't give you that feeling. Absolutely you know, so, not. Someone no. giving me a a new car, although I might like it for you know a little while, but right. it doesn't last very long. But no. that that feeling of helping someone and someone coming to you and saying, "Look, this is what you've done for me, and I'm so appreciative. You've changed my life." That stays with you forever. It truly does. It's the gift that keeps on giving. So oh, yeah. Love it. Yep, you got yes. it. Well, Kristen, we are at the end of the show, and you've been fantastic. You've given us a lot of great information, and now I'd like to kind of throw it back to you to, to end it with, how can people get in touch with you? Thank you, Tim. Yeah, it's been a pleasure to be on. You can visit me at www.kristin, K-R-I-S-T-I-N, Swarchek, S-W-A-R-C-H-E-C-K, Dot com. That's my uh, landing page that has a lot of information about me. And you can also email me at Kristen at KristenSwarczak.com and schedule a free complimentary 30-minute strategy session where we can talk about what's going on in your life. And I can put something in place that you can take a look at and think about you know, whether or not you want to take that next step to living out your greatness. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you, Kristen. You've been great. I'll be in touch. Take care. Thank you, Tim. All right. Bye-bye. Want more entrepreneurial tips? Go to timlaskus.com.